Welcome back. So, first of all, I apologize for not uploading for a while. Secondly, Merry Christmas. Thirdly, um, actually I forgot what I was going to say. Oh yeah, my audio and video might be a little bit better or worse. I don't know. I haven't recorded in a while, so, and I had to mess around with some settings and stuff, so it might be all over the place. But I think my audio should be better because, you know, it's finally not like hell like temperatures anymore i can turn off the fan for a little bit but um yeah so in this video i'm going to be going over address sanitizer and undefined behavior sanitizer so the goal of these things are well i haven't defined what they are but the goal for these things are to catch undefined behavior and memory errors just in general um one example of undefined behavior would be to access, you know, an element in an array that is outside of its bounds. Because again, you don't know what's outside of the bounds, right? It could be some garble left over from another program or whatever. Because you haven't, like, you know, when you allocate that memory, you the rest of it may not be allocated. You don't know what's next. You could have a variable on the stack that you can access by, you know, going outside of the bounds of your array and just accessing its value but then also there could just also be nothing after it right so that's why it's undefined because you don't know what it will do it's not defined hence the name undefined so we can do we can take a look at very common like undefined behavior is um you know dereferencing a null pointer so well, how do we use this undefined behavior sanitizer? Well, all it really is is a simple flag on here. I added a lot of W errors. Um, I'm probably going to remove this. Keep it simple. Okay, please compile with warnings. Okay, we do hyphen F sanitize equals undefined for undefined behavior sanitizer. It's also acronymed as uh, UBSAN. Um, and address sanitizer is acronymed as ASAN. So we just, you know, pass these flags in and we compile it. And I do imagine there's a performance penalty with this, but if we do dot slash main, well, we didn't get a segmentation fault, did we? Well, I mean, kind of we did. But here, well, okay, here, both of them are conflicting. Let's turn one of them off, actually. Let's run it, and it says, runtime error st store to null pointer of type int. That's it. It tells you that you tried to store to a null pointer. Well, if we turn on, you know, address, let's ignore the first section of it, um, but it gives a little bit more in depth. Well, aren't they redundant? Well, they're not really. They overlap in areas like this, but they also over they don't overlap in certain other areas i would say that if you want to have if you want to just turn one on i would say turn on address sanitizer but um what else it can do is you know detect how to bounds access now it's five elements we're accessing the fifth index which is the sixth element which again doesn't exist so let's compile this and by the way my IntelliSense thing on IntelliSense, bro. My LSP is already telling me that this isn't good. Um, well, compiling and taking a look. Again, address sanitizer, I'm sorry, undefined behavior sanitizer is telling me index five out of bounds of type in, of type in five. It's saying stack buffer overflow. It is telling me exactly where my pointer is pointing to because if you remember, this is the value five. This is the last element we had. And we will tell us what line it's located on, everything. It'll, it'll, it'll tell us everything. So we don't really need to worry. Um, but it does tell us what line it's on, so it's very good to track down you know, memory errors. But these aren't the only type of memory errors. There are tons of other errors. And there's quite literally so many that I probably can't go over in one video. But I'm going to go over very common ones. Well, another one that we can go over is, this is more uh, of like a memory leak. We allocated that and we did not free it. So let's see what happens. Well, 
undefined behavior sanitizer doesn't care. It doesn't do memory leaks, but address sanitizer does. And it tells me that there's an indirect leak of four bytes. Well, I can make this like 200 or something. Now it's saying it's an 800 byte leak because again, two times four is eight, 800 bytes leaked because we didn't free it. Now, again, we could have do, we could do two, right? Actually, let's not free any of them. See what it says. What's saying it's two 800 byte leaks. It actually separates them by allocation. It's not like, oh, you have 600 byte, like a 1600 byte leak. Go find where the two bytes are being leaked. It'll tell you exactly where they are. Um, and if I, you know, free one of them. Boom. Now it only displays one and it tells us which one it is again on line five, which is right here. So that's what the cool stuff about this. And again, it is able to detect a, you know, a stack buffer overflow, but it can also detect a heat buffer overflow. So, you know, we're good. We properly freed everything, but we just happen to, you know, access outside of bounds. It'll also throw us an error saying that there's a heat buffer overflow. So it will catch all these errors and it is great for, you know, whenever you're developing an application, you just turn the stuff on and it'll work. Okay, now to address concerns. Will this work every single time? I don't know, probably, probably not. In my experience, it has worked quite well. Um, what about Valgrind? Valgrind is great, but I haven't really used Valgrind that much, but I'm sure it's it's great. But you know, this is another alternative, which is, you know, if you're on a Linux system, especially, I don't think you really have to do much. You just turn on the flag and it'll, it'll do its thing. But there's also other ways to, you know, prevent these kind of, kind of errors, especially leaks. Leaks are probably the easiest thing to prevent as opposed to, you know, buffer overflows and stuff like that. Mm, that's, that's a little bit harder to, you know, write a library to prevent that or something like that. Um, that's when like address sanitizer really helps. As for leaks, I would probably say that um, you could write an arena, first of all, that, you know, a bunch of memory you can allocate there. Um, and then you just free it all at once, right? Or you could have like a custom malloc function which tracks every single allocation and at the end, it gives you a summary saying that, oh, well, on this line, this line, this line, you did that. If you guys want to see me make that, I will. I don't think it's that useful, especially with address sanitizer, but, you know, just for as like a fun project, I would definitely love to do that. Um, there is an example of that kind of library. I will actually show you guys. And of course, full credit to whoever made this. Um, I'll, I'll tell you guys who made it, but one moment. Well, if you don't know who this is, his name is Eskel Steenberg. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. And wow, he's changed his thumbnails a lot. But regardless, this video, this video, all of them are great. Highly recommend watching them. But he also has something quite similar. It's called Forge. But um, yeah, that's about it for this video. Thank you guys for watching. Let me know if I should, you know, make this library. Um, and I'll see you guys next time. I know it's a very short video, but um, yeah. Uh, Merry Christmas and uh, have a great day.